Sergeant Desmo made the uh, decision to enter the vehicle. Using a wooden ladder that he borrowed from a nearby telephone repair truck, he carefully entered the vehicle and administered first aid to the victim until Detroit Edison was able to cut the electrical current from the fallen power line. The victim was subsequently transported to a local hospital where she was treated and released for her injuries. For his brave and courageous actions, Sergeant Desmond received a citation and was awarded the Medal of Valor. During Sergeant Desmond's tenure, he also served alongside the late officer Henry Wolfe. Officer Wolfe was tragically killed in the line of duty in May of 1973 following the events of a traffic stop in which the occupants had just been involved in a shooting in the city of Royal Oak. Officer Wolfe was awarded the Medal of Valor posthumously. At the time of Officer Wolfe's death, there was not enough time to have this medal ordered uh, in time and delivered for the funeral. Sergeant Desmond offered to have, this, have his medal buried with Officer Wolf, and the department was to order him a replacement. Through an oversight of the administration, the medal was never replaced. Out of respect to Officer Wolf, Sergeant Desmond never said a word. It was not until recently that I learned of the oversight after receiving a letter from Sergeant Desmond's wife, Mrs. Deborah Desmond. Mrs. Desmond wrote the letter unbeknownst to Sergeant Desmond, explaining to me the circumstances. Also, she included a copy of a news article and the council minutes which depicted Sergeant Desmond being presented his award by then Mayor Joseph Forbes. Forty-two years have passed since this incident occurred, and I stand here before you on behalf of the Oak Park Department of Public Safety to offer my deepest and sincerest apology to Sergeant Desmond for this terrible oversight. Since that time, many changes have taken place within the Public Safety Department. The Medal of Valor, which has now uh, been replaced with the Distinguished Service Award. The name of the award has changed, but the honor and foundation by which it was established remains unblemished. I humbly stand here before you today, extremely proud to present to you once again the Distinguished Service Medal for your heroic efforts displayed on April 11, 1968. And I'm equally as proud to stand here before you sharing the distinction as a public safety officer for the City of Oak Park. So on behalf of the City of Oak Park, and the entire Public Safety Department. We thank you. We honor you for your 26 years of unwavering s service and sacrifice and commitment to this city and the public safety uh, profession. Thank you and God bless you.
Director, do you want to get all the officers? seats if they don't mind. Officers in blue, they probably like yeah. I don't really have to be in there with all the officers who come up in the back. That's a good one. Yeah. Job. Where am I? Oh, the boards and commissions are first, right? Okay. Um, yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. Mm. Thanks. Next on the agenda, we have uh, boards and commissioners being sworn in tonight. For your information, Oak Park boards and commissions are established by the city charter to involve residents in the critical decisions that affect our city, and to bring fresh new ideas and new activities to benefit our residents. Would the new members come forward and face the audience for introductions? Photo op first. <laughs> um, please raise your hand as I call your name. Uh, Danielle Fakessa is on the Beautification Commission. Ben Waxenberg will be on the Employees Retirement System Board of Trustees. Alvin J. Beagle will be on Emergency Services Commission. Carla Wallace will be on Ethnic Advisory Commission. Mickey Alderman, Recreation Advisory Commission. Now, please turn and face the council members. Council members, please stand. New members, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Michigan, the Charter of the City of Oak Park, that I will endeavor to secure and maintain an honest and efficient administration of the affairs of the city of Oak Park. Of the of Oak Park. 
the affairs of the city of Oak Park. Free from partisan control or distinction. Free from partisan control or distinction. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties as a board or commission member. The duties of a board or commission member. For the city of Oak Park. For the city of Oak Park. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Council members, please come down to uh, congratulate our new members. Um, I would like to thank all of you for donating your time, energy, and talents to benefit our city. Thank you so much. so special. We have another wonderful uh, proclamation for another Oak Park hero. Terry, is it Falcon? Terry Falcon is um, the niece of our very proud Mayor Pro Tem, Paul Levine, and his very proud wife, Sharon Levine. Uh, Terry's husband, daughter, mother, and grandfather are here to celebrate tonight. Um, I'm sure all of you saw the news and uh, have seen uh, what Terry has done. Uh, we can share the proclamation. This is a City of Oak Park, Oak Park City Council proclamation honoring Terry Falcon. Whereas lifelong Oak Park resident, Terry Falcon, witnessed a serious auto, action, auto accident on February 10th, 2015, and proceeded to provide life-saving assistance in the rescue of a newborn baby. And whereas Terry Falcon exercised her skills as a former United States Marine and a trained paramedic in freeing the trapped child from a car seat inside an overturned vehicle when ambulance workers on the accident required her assistance. Whereas Terry Falcon unselfishly responded to the crisis without hesitation. So many of us say it's not my problem, and thank God on that day she said it is my problem. She said that knowing what to do was almost instinctive, despite the fact that she suffered burns from the rescue. 
whereas a number of local television news stations and print media covered the rescue event and herald, heralded Terry Falcon as a homegrown hero, the right person at the right time. Whereas Ta Terry Falcon, age 32, mother of a five-year-old adorable daughter, wife of John Falcon, lives with her family on Nadine Street in Oak Park. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Marion McClellan, mayor of the city of Oak Park, Michigan, on behalf of the Oak Park City Council and all our residents, by proclamation do express sincere gratitude to Terry Falcon for a rare and selfless act of heroism that saved a young life and brought great pride to our community. Terry Falcon, if you would please come on up and accept this proclamation. Council members. Um, the proud uncle would like to have a few words. I'd just Mayor like Pro to Tem. say, Terry, we are all so proud of you, not just for the courage and heroism that you displayed, but really for the caring and the compassion and the character that it took that motivated you to go help. That's, that's a, an extraordinary, uh, that's a wonderful trait that I hope you carry through life and continue to uh, be a source of pride for all of us. And I'm sure you will. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a proclamation for Forgotten Harvest that will be presented to them on their 25th anniversary. This is an Oak Park um, charity that was rated the best run in the country. And our city manager, Eric Tungate, met with the people and agreed that they are just outstanding. So they provide free of charge deliveries to emergency agencies in Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties. They, they prepare 48 million meals a year for those in need. They prevent nutrition waste in the Detroit metropolitan community by rescuing and donating prepared or perishable food to emergency shelters like pantries, soup kitchens, and children's homes and shelters. We will be presenting this proclamation to them on the occasion of their 25th anniversary. Next, um, we have a presentation by the Road Commission of Oakland County. Um, please help me welcome Gary Petrovich, Deputy Managing Director. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity to come speak to you today about Prop 1, also known as the road funding proposal. Um, there's a lot of information related to this. Um, I've got a lot to get through here, so um, I'd be happy to answer any questions when I'm done. Just um, I'll try and get through as much as I can here That's first. Fine. 
first of all, start us off. Right now, without the future of road funding, this is what we're going to see more of. Right now, we have two roads that are closed due to culvert failures and more to come. The bottom line is without additional funding, this is going to continue to happen. The condition of our roads are very poor and they're not getting any better. And right now, there is no plan B to Proposition 1. There simply is no, nothing else they can go do. If this fails, they got to start all over again. Just some background on the road commission quickly. We're separate from the county general government. We're a separate agency. We have 378 employees. This is less than we had back in the 1960s when the population was one half and the amount of miles traveled was one third. Wow. We have a $100 million budget. We're the largest road county system in the state at 2,700 miles. We still have 770 miles of gravel roads, which is surprising as many people think we're a, an urban county, but we're actually um, rural and urban. We take care of 230 miles of state highways like Telegraph and Woodward and the interstate system. We take care of 90% of all traffic signals, over 1,500 traffic signals in the county. We have over 150,000 road signs, so we have a significantly large system. Why are the roads so bad in Michigan? If there's one thing I leave you with today and there's only one thing you remember, it's this slide right here. A lot of people talk to us about that we don't know how to build roads. We use poor materials, bad contractors, poor oversight, big trucks ruining the roads. But the reality is Michigan simply does not invest in its road system. It's been this way since the 1960s. It's been 50 years in the making. This is nothing new. We've done good with health, education, and welfare, but we've been in the bottom eight states in funding roads for 50 years. Hmm. Right now, we are dead last. If, at the end of the day, there is no silver bullet to, to um, build in a road. Nobody's got a secret potion that builds a road at half the cost that lasts twice as long. We're all doing the thing, same things across the states. The bottom line is, if you see better roads out there, they're putting more money into them, and Michigan is not. And that's the bottom line. Here's um, an overview. We rate our roads every year along with everyone across the state and across the nation. Zero on a scale of zero to 10, zero to three is poor, four and five is fair, good six to 10. Right now, 44% of our roads are in poor condition. If this road proposal does not pass, five years from now, we'll 50% we'll increase in the amount of our poor roads on the system. It's at an accelerated failure rate right now as roads are getting very old that we have out there. On the flip side, if Proposal 1 does pass, we can make a significant improvement into the system. There will be a serious money going into it, and as I said, real money means real fixes in the road system business. Another way of looking at this, this is a 10,000 foot view of our county, but if, what I want you to focus on is the amount of red you see on that map right now. This was done from 2006. This is what our, our road system looked like. If you fast forward now to modern day, that's, that's oh. the amount of red in the system and it's going to continue to fail at that rate without additional funding. So if you look back quickly, that's what it looked like eight years ago, and that's now. So we're seeing a significant change in the conditions of the roads. The details of Proposal 1, first of all, le the elections on May 5th to determine this. What the proposal guarantees, first of all, every penny that's collected at the, get, at the pump goes to transportation, which is not the case with, right now, which I'll talk about more. Every penny collected from this proposal will, um, that's intended for the school aid fund is constitutionally protected to go there of K through 12 schools and the community colleges. And if the roads don't last, there will be warranties and the road builders will pay to fix them. These are the three elements when polls were done early on that resonated the most with residents that said we've got to have these three in the proposal. And while there's some warts in this proposal, these particular three items are very important and they did get in there. What's Proposal 1 do? First of all, it eliminates sales tax on gas and diesel. Right now, Michigan's only one of a handful of states that charges sales tax on top of gas and all the other taxes that are there. None of that right now goes to fund roads. What it'll take is the current 19 cent per gallon gas tax and the 15 cents on diesel and convert it to a wholesale tax. If the proposal goes through, it'll change essentially raise it to 41.7 cents per gallon and then 46.4 on diesel. So, and then all of that that's collected at the pump will then go into roads. Look at it a different way. Currently on the left there, that bar chart shows the bottom left orange is the 19 cent gas tax that's currently on there. The red is the 6% sales tax that's on gas. 
none of which goes to roads right now. It goes to schools, local revenue sharing primarily. After, if proposal one passes, the, um, it'll essentially change that bar on the right, which is about four cents more per gallon that you'll see a change, but all of that revenue there will now go into the road system. Power Proposition 1 also has floor and ceiling limits to it, so it won't drastically change. It can fluctuate with the price of gas, but there's some controls on that to keep it reasonable within inflation. The sales tax, general sales tax outside of gas now, which will no longer be sales tax on gas, will move from 6 to 7 percent. The additional revenue that's seen from this proposal will go to schools and municipality to make up for loss of revenue from the, fuel, the sales tax that was taken off gas. What's this impact? For roads, $1.2 billion a year. And that's a formula between the state, the counties, and the cities. We'll get that. This, the state of Oak, or city of Oak Park will see a million dollar increase per year in their road funding budget, but when this is fully funded. Grows with consumer prices, as I mentioned. But last time we raised the gas tax was 1997. They raised it four cents. At that time, if they would have indexed, indexed that to inflation, we wouldn't have this discussion right now. It would have been about one penny a year in the change in gas, and this discussion would not even be here right now. So this will help us, you know, again, address future issues down the road. Transit will get another $112 million a year. Early payment and that's debt service. A significant portion of the first two years will go to pay down MDOT's debt service. They have a large debt they've built up over the years because they couldn't afford to build the roads, so they bonded for roads without that future funding. The unfortunate part of that is that, you know, the, the money's come due and there's a significant portion there. So they're looking at paying down a lot of that debt service as part of this to put, put them in a much better position, which is a smart thing to do. Improved railroad crossings, the safety at railroad crossings was a concern. About $5 million a year will go to that. Impact for other public agencies, $300 million additional dollars to the school aid fund, which is important, $100 million to villages and cities. Oak Park will see about a quarter million dollars a year increase. On TV and radio, you see a lot of people talk about special interest involved in this. I don't see these as special interests. These are important to all of us. And then another $20 million for DNR marinas and ORV trails because they do Obviously, when you're filling up for those things and not on roads, you are spending gas tax, so they, they, they funnel some of that back in to improve those facilities. The individual taxpayer, sales tax raises from 6 to 7 percent um, statewide. The DAC gas tax will increase, as I mentioned, about 4 cents a gallon is what you'll see. Um, certainly, gas goes up and fluctuates quite a bit, so exactly what happens on day one um, would be tough, tough to determine. Earned income tax credit, about $260 million, um, expanded eligibility of that and increased some of the funding related to that to help offset some of the increase in costs related to this proposal. Registration fees, currently when you buy a new car, the first three years you get a 10% discount in the registration. Essentially, they're going to phase that out where the amount you pay the first year is what you pay over the life of the car now. Registration fees on hybrids, electric vehicles, plug-ins will all have an increased registration fee. Again, the roads are a user system. If you use the roads, so if you have unusually high miles per gallon like these vehicles do, you're not paying the fair share on it. So the thought is to help them have a little more buy-in to the road system. I can't tell you how many times I've heard how much damage trucks do to our road system and our large trucks that we allow in Michigan. The bottom line is Michigan does have um, large trucks are allowed in Michigan, but we spread them out over more axles on the engineering side as we deal with. Um, that doesn't do any more damage to the road. Additionally, it just means if you cut the weight down, that means more trucks on the roads. The goods have still got to go. So either you're going to be facing one truck on the road or two that, that you're going around. So, and if two trucks are on the road, it's not a whole lot of difference. But the point was made to the legislature that they need to pay their fair share. So the diesel tax, as I mentioned earlier, was greatly increased. Um, and, and they'll have to pay that. And the registration fees for the larger trucks over 25,000 pounds will go up about 34%. So there's a significant chunk will be um, burdened by the, the trucking industry. What's the reality? If this does not pass, there's not likely going to be another answer to this for many years. It took a long time for them to get to this proposal. And we understand it's not the way we would have written it, but it is legislation. That's how they make it sometimes. 
and at the end of the day, this is our best chance to get there. There's a lot of other things out there, but none of them made it as far as this one did. It's a time-consuming process, and there's a, there's a lot of alternatives out there they, they went through, and they couldn't get any agreement on it. The, the legislature is extremely more conservative now. The likelihood of getting anything in near term is, is really doesn't exist. There will be a lot of people that they say there's a plan B out there, but nothing's passed, and anything they brought up has been talked about many times over and they couldn't get agreement on. And what they have in front of us in Proposal 1 was what the only one they could get agreement on. They got two-thirds of the legislature on both sides of the House and Senate to agree to that. In several years, our road system will be far worse, as I showed there on, earlier on with the pie chart. It's, this is not something that you can just ignore and it goes away. It will get worse and to repair it becomes more and more expensive. A road that's severely declining costs much more to fix than one that's in good shape. And that's the reality of it. And the sooner we get to this, the, the better it is. And we'll continue to pay the pothole tax, as we call it. The studies that show up to $500 a year, the average citizen's paying, and, and um, not only just the, the repairs you see from the tires and rods and front ends, but the additional wear and tear on the vehicle, that the vehicles just don't last as long as well. And this, this proposal one is somewhere around, you know, the average is around $260 a year. So. There's an investment to be paid in, you know, paying off doing good roads that will come back later with, not da with less damage to your vehicles. What does this mean for the Road Commission? First year we'll get an additional $14 million. By its wholly funded in, three year, in the third year we'll have an additional $41 million, which will allow us to make some significant improvements to the road system. What's not, but what's not sugar-coated, the system's really bad and it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. It will, but we'll get there. Um, we just we need the money to do it. Um, another, we also get, often get asked about the sales tax and where it stands now if it goes from 6 to 7 percent. And we looked at a number of states near us, and it ranges anywhere from the 5.43 in Wisconsin, which has had a 30 cent per gallon gas tax, 11 cents higher than us for a decade, um, all the way up to 8.47 cents in New York. So we're, we'll, st we'll still be right in the middle sales tax wise in the states around us. So we're not going to be, again, outside the norm. And we'll finish the presentation again with saying there's no plan B to this. This is what we, it's not the best, but it's what we got in front of us. And with this, we can make a significant improvement to our roadway system. Without, there's no foreseeable future to have any answer that's going to get us to improve our roads. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for presenting to us. Uh, well done. Does council have questions? Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, what percentage of this extra penny general sales tax goes to the roads? The sales tax itself, it's a 6 to 7%, will be going to schools and local revenue sharing. Okay? That, that, that's where it goes. Okay? So not, none of that goes to the roads? No. What happens is there was a sales tax on gas that was paying for that. For the, that and that's, so the sales tax is going to now pay for the schools and local revenue sharing. And then what's on gas now will all go to gas. So there'll be about 1.2 billion going to the roads. Thank you. Yep. Questions, uh, council member speech. Uh, yes, I'd like to thank you for your pres presentation first. I thought it was very thorough. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to point out before I ask my question, um, it doesn't seem to me that this is a partisan issue because as you mentioned, there's two thirds of the house and the Senate it took to um, come up with this before they asked the voters to make the decision. So um, I wanna just point, make that statement. Uh, my question is, when you started, you mentioned that there was no plan B, and when you finished, you mentioned there was no plan B. If this proposal does not pass, what does that mean for the Road Commission as far as how you all will go forward with all your responsibilities that you have? We're going to continue to do what we've been doing. We, do, we, take, we try to maximize the use of every dollar we get. We try to leverage every dollar we get any way we can. Um, it just it becomes it's just eroding away. The inflation's eroding away at what we can do. So we just have to continue to smartly cut back in areas that um, what we feel don't affect safety. Our number one priority is safety, and we have the safest roads in the country here in Oakland County. Our fatality rate is the lowest in the country here, and, and so we're going to continue to focus on safety. And when we have to make our cuts, we'll continue to make cuts on priority basis based on that. But we, we, it will get tougher and tougher. We prioritize, we, um, privatize, we privatize a lot of elements of our work as we see fit that would make sense, and we'll continue to look at where that makes sense as well. 
Council Member Seligson. Uh, just a point of order. Two thirds of the legislature decided not to act, uh, not to uh, take responsibility for a vote and kick it back to the voters. That's what they agreed to. They didn't agree to anything. Thank you. Okay, um, further questions? Beautifully done presentation, very knowledgeable. Um, I used to think the Oakland County Road Commission was the bad guys, but come to find out if it took $100 to fix the roads, they give you 15. And um, I wouldn't want to be sitting in your seat talking to everybody who's mad about the roads. Thank you for everything you do. Um, I, hope, I hope you get good news on May 5th. Uh, we appreciate all your hard work and um, balancing that small amount of money over a whole county. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Item 11 is accounting reports. We need approval for a payment of an invoice submitted by Garen Luco Miller, PC, for legal services in the total amount of 10000 $177.70. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Seligson? Yes. Council Member Speech? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine? Yes. Motion carried. Item B. Motion to approve payment of an invoice submitted by Howard L. Schiffman, PC for legal services retainer for April 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2015 in the total amount of $10,000. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and supported. Questions or discussion? Roll call, please. Council Member Seligson? Yes. Council Member Speech? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Um, motion carries. Item C, approval of payment for an invoice is submitted by Seacrest, Wardle, Lynch, Hampton, Truex, and Morley for legal services in the amount of $6,172.37. So moved. Support. Uh, discussion or questions? City Manager Tungi. Yeah, Madam Mayor, members of council, I wanted to just uh, let you know that Seacrest, Wardle, Bill Hampton, and Nancy Green will be attending the next council meeting and will uh, be entering into a closed session to discuss some of our ongoing litigation. Thank you, City Manager. No further questions. Roll call, please. Council Member Speech? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Seligson? Yes. Motion carried. Item 13A is the first reading of an ordinance to amend Chapter 6, Alcoholic Liquors, Article 3, Regulation of On-the-Premises Consumption, Section 6.2 and 6.9 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Oak Park, Michigan. So first we need a motion to approve the first reading. I move to postpone. Do, do we have to vote on that? Can I get a second? If you Is there a second? Was that A? I move to postpone on 13A. Second. Wait. Oh, is this? 13A is uh, an ordinance about the uh, beer tent. We already approved the agenda. We already approved the agenda. Approved the yes. Say it again. We've already approved the agenda. Yeah. We have approved the agenda. Okay, so that motion is out of order. Motion yeah, to order. motion to uh, approve order. the first reading, please. Point of order from our parliamentarian. It's out of order. Are we allowed to postpone or table a motion? Madam Mayor, if I... Sorry, I'm sorry. A postponement would be um, a motion that would occur after the motion is on the floor for approval. Thank you. A motion for the first reading, then, please. That's what I'm... Mo so moved. That's what I'm second. second. That's your second. Um, questions or discussion? Before we go into that, I think I would like our... Director of Community and Economic Development to explain this to everyone. Give us some background. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. We are proposing this change in our ordinance to allow for one of our events that is a city event, the Summerfest, to be held August 8th and 9th, um, to add a beverage tent, like most communities do have, for their festivals and events. 
The change in ordinance uh, would be allowing us to do it on public property through a special license that would be gained by city council approval, and it would only be good for events, um, two of them that we have in our city, and one is the Independence Day parade events, and then also the Summer Fest, and that would be the limitations to it. And you wouldn't have to have it for both of those, but you are allowed to have it for both of those. Correct, those would be the only two that would be allowed on public grounds. We are allowed to issue these licenses to um, other locations within the city, but that is not something that we're changing. Okay, what, um, it looks like this is only if it is run by a nonprofit organization. Correct, it would need to be run by a 501c3 organization. Um, and you're recommending uh, two days because these, uh, the one event is a two day event. And um, can you tell us about any of the research of the other communities? Yeah, we researched many communities across the state and um, almost every single one of them allow for events to be on public grounds. They allow um, them to do it through special licenses. So it's the same approach that we're asking city council to approve here today. What would have to happen before this? Uh, what's the procedure? Similar to our special event license procedure, they would apply for the special event license. It's vetted through our city staff and then presented to city council with the recommendations from city staff. Okay. Um, now changes can be made after first reading, is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we have, we have a motion and we've had a, uh, there is discussion, is there discussion on this one? Um, council member speech. Um, just a, a question, haven't we already approved one similar to this, the, the far Forgotten Harvest? Forgotten Harvest has done it at their location. We, we do allow these types of events within the city. That's what, I mean. what does not allow us from doing it at our special events that we have on public grounds mm -hmm. is the clause in this ordinance that states that it can't occur on public grounds or parks. So it's just allowing it at two special occasions that the city sponsors those events. What's the advantage to the city of Oak Park, the Summerfest or whatever? What's the advantage to partnering with um, forgotten harvest on this. Mm -hmm. um, what do we get? Yeah, there, there's lots of advantages. Cities typically will host events like this to attract residents and visitors to kind of preview their city and see what they have to offer. Sometimes it helps to attract some new businesses. The helpful part of partnering with somebody um, like a 501c3 is we're able to use their database of people that they're already in contact with to help promote our event and bring more people to it. So it's a benefit, benefit to the city. Uh, any concerns? Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, the reason I wanted to postpone this is the information we were given in the summary is that the Community Economic Development Department is planning for the upcoming Summer Fest event to be held August 8th through 9th, 2015. The committee that is planning the event would like to build this into a much larger event to attract visitors and residents to attend. It was suggested, prepositional phase, to add a beverage tent that serves beer and wine at this year's events. Now, it is not clear to me uh, whether this was a resolution of the Oak Park Arts and Cultural Commission, whether this was a staff uh, presentation or who initiated this. I understand that we also initiated a contact with Forgotten Harvest. Uh, I know we have a lot of nonprofits that participate in our events and we love it. Uh, and they do uh, bring people in, but not necessarily serving beer. Um, so my question, uh, the, my reason for postponing it is, is this is really murky where this is coming from. It's just not explained to us clearly that this has passed through our arts, uh, uh, Park Arts and Cultural uh, Commission. It has not clear that it's been uh, something that's been discussed at the Independence Day Commission. And I'd like to postpone it till our residents that are on those commissions get a chance to weigh in. I can speak to that a little bit. Um, the Arts and Cultural Commission is one of the commissions that serves on the Summerfest Planning Commission. Um, we also have the Ethnic Advisory Commission that serves on that as well. And we meet on a monthly basis. This has been brought up by several different people. The mayor has been part of those discussions. She attends our meetings regularly for the Summerfest Planning. And it's been brought up by several members on the Summerfest Planning Commission meeting. So 
It has been discussed thoroughly. It was an oversight from myself in regards to not knowing that it was there was an ordinance not allowing us to do that. Um, it was brought to our attention um, after the fact of talking to Forgotten Harvest by somebody from our Parks and Rec Department. So most cities allow it and you figured it was here and it wasn't until after the discussion that you decided, you discovered that it's well, not in our and ordinance. And it was brought, brought in front of other city staff as well. The problem is, is we do allow it on other locations. There's just that small little gray area that doesn't allow it in a public park. So that was the oversight. So we're correcting for that. Correct. Council members, you're, um, <coughs> would you weigh in on this, please? Council member Sullickson. Uh When I was doing an event for the Army in Warren, and uh, the city of Warren, you know, again, the, the Army complied with the city's um, uh, ordinance was almost identical to this that you know a nonprofit runs in and works real well mm -hmm. at least Good. over there my experience was again I was the person I was the chairperson of this 8,000 person event so it worked yeah. real well okay. uh, council member Burns uh, yeah well if it's going to attract positive responses from outside organizations and other businesses and a good event for the residents then yes I'm all for it council member speech I think if we have, um, like I said, like she said, uh, a ability to attract people, and it's something that we have good control over. You know, it's in a contained environment, and all of that. I think it's something that will be beneficial to the community too. I think Councilman Member Seligson had brought up at a meeting that you, or maybe after a meeting, that you don't want it to be open to any any nonprofit and have regular events at at um, at the city park. So to make sure that didn't happen, we limited it to just the possibility of two events. So if the 4th of July Commission does not want to have it at their event, they, don't they are to. not forced to have it. That's their decision, but it's an option. Correct. I think one parks department said there's no, um, there's no beer and wine except these four concerts that we have mm -hmm. once a month in the summer. And uh, others just limited to um, if, if the city council votes to approve this special license. But we made it even more restrictive than that. Uh, so um, I am quite comfortable with it as it is. And I recommend passage. Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, I am uncomfortable with it because our city park is not a really contained environment like walking off a, a, street, a portion of a street. And we have a policy of no alcoholic beverages in any city property that includes these buildings, that includes the parks. Uh, I think when people voted for tavern licenses, they did that for the benefit of bringing in restaurants that incidentally served beer and wine. I don't think this was something that was contemplated by the residents, and I will not have support tor towards uh, changing our ordinance to allow the sale and consumption of alcoholic beverages in our parks or in our city buildings. Now, it's said that um, you don't have to change because survival isn't a requirement. But we would like to change, and we would like to move forward with our city. So my recommendation is to go to vote. Beer is not a requirement. A vote? Are you comfortable with voting? OK, roll call vote, please. This is the motion to, to pass the first reading. Sorry? The, the, what's on the floor? Okay. Yes. Uh, Council Member um, Burns. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine. No. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Council Member Salikson. Yes. Council Member Speech. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 15A. Uh, City Manager Tungate, please. Present 15A. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, we just heard from the Road Commission on a, a proposal one, and this is a resolution that we received, um, I think at the request of the mayor, although it is the Michigan Municipal League's recommended mm -hmm. resolution and support. And mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that this was in front of you for your consideration. Right. This was mailed to me. Um, and in the meetings that were given to public elected officials, 
the Michigan Municipal League said it's a flawed uh, program, but it's the best we can get, and if we don't get this, then the legislature will say, well, they don't want any taxes, and therefore we have to make further cuts to municipalities and schools and poor folks. And so I personally am in support, although I know it is, uh, there's a wide variety of opinions on this, uh, regardless of party. Anything more, further? Um, are there, let's see, I think we, I think we need to pass, we need to get a motion. Right? Get a motion. So first, regardless of if you're voting yes or no, we need to, uh, to um, move to pass this resolution in support. So moved. Okay, moved, is there a second? Okay, dies for last of a second, thank you. Uh, 15B, and I know, uh, uh, Director Maloney, if you could join me at the podium, and I know we have guests here from the Shostag Brothers. Good evening. In front of you is agenda item 15B, asking for the City Council to approve the conceptual PUD development plan from Shostag Brothers for the Armory site, the former National Guard off of Eight Mile Road. Um, we have representatives from Shostag. Uh, Steve Duszynski, the first and the second, is here to answer any questions that you might have. And I believe on the screen was going to be the site plan. So hopefully they can bring that up. And Director Maroney, if you could just explain briefly to Council what this conceptual PUD development plan is for and why it's necessary. Yeah. It's required by our city that if you have a PUD, which is a plan unit development, that the actual conceptual site or what you envision the site to look like when it's developed has to be approved by our Planning Commission and City Council. And there are terms set on those uh, approvals. So they've actually come to us, I believe, three times before with the conceptual site plan that's been approved by City Council. They've all since expired. Um, with the market picking up now, Shostak Brothers is expecting uh, possible future development at that site and wants to get this first process done. Thank you. And I just wanted to add, this was unanimously supported by the Planning Commission. <laughs> uh, so we have a motion to accept the recommendation of the Planning Commission for approval of the conceptual PUD development plan from Shostak Brothers and Company for Armory Park, the former National Guard Armory, 8 Mile Road. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, Let's um, get some more information maybe from our, our visitors. Welcome. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, in the last year, we've received many interests on the industrial portion of the armory property. And one party in particular is finishing up performing their due diligence investigations and is looking to come before the Planning Commission for site plan approval in the next month or so. And that's the reason we were asking for your approval this evening. As for the commercial portion, we have no specific interest at the moment, moment but, continually, but continue to aggressively market this property. Um, the industrial 40 acres to the north shows a single user. Uh, det detention ponds on the north and south side, uh, buffers to the adjacent residential properties, and the primary access to the site would be from Greenfield loc located to the west of the pro proposed site. The commercial 30 acres to the, south, to the south is composed of a couple large retail boxes, single detention basin, and its primary access would be at uh, 8 Mile. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, does council have questions? No. Looks like we're satisfied. Are we ready to vote then? Thank you for coming. Appreciate your availability. Thank you. I'm looking forward to uh, good news. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Levine? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Selickson? Yes. Council Member Speech? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. And yeah, Director Maroney, 15C, please. Yes, Sonny's at 132510 Mile Road is requesting a temporary sign to be approved uh, beginning March 17th through May 16th. 
They're requesting the 30-day extension at the same time. The sign will be placed on the sidewalk in front of the building. Okay. And the Planning Commission recommends approving this. Okay. Um, a motion to approve the temporary sign request. So moved. Second. Um, just uh, discussion. It's like for tomorrow? Yes, they would begin putting the sign out tomorrow. Um, I have a couple spelling errors that I noticed on the sign. I wonder if they would mind fixing those. It, it may already be ordered by now, to be honest with you. They're signed. I, I, I can certainly take your recommendations. They can reorder it, in my opinion. <laughs> if they want to get okay, they better not have spelling errors. What are, what are your changes? Okay, first, um, first is just my opinion is that incorporated doesn't have to be there. The second is um, it's um, lady suits knits. And jewelry, jewelry is spelled wrong. Add an S to knits, knits, add an E to jewelry, take off ink. And if they ordered it this way, they can reorder it, in my opinion. I will give that recommendation to them. That's don't mess with no English teacher. <laughs> okay, um, we have a motion to approve? Yeah. Yes. Uh, under conditions, I would like a condition that the spelling errors are correct. It's up to you guys. <laughs> okay, everybody agree? You know, the spelling errors, but I don't know about the taking off the ink. Not no. really, because if somebody later on comes to us with a sign, and that sign, they intentionally want to spell something wrong, because it is, there are very things, in various it. types of marketing, where people, you know, change things and use things and this. This but, isn't one of them. Well, I agree with you 100%, but we're setting a precedent here. Before you do, um, you I will not okay a sign with jewelry spelled wrong. Well, you know that doesn't say anything about us. That does say something about the store owner, Madam Mayor. And, and mm. Mayor, they may have just spelled it wrong on yeah. this. It doesn't mean the sign will actually appear that way. Oh, okay, let's double check that. Yes, that, Madam Mayor, the highest uh, likelihood is that this was a uh, employee or somebody that mm -hmm. filled this out and misspelled it. But I would just want to say, just only because I've experienced situations like this, um, especially in the community I came from, which is the most diverse community and one of the most diverse in the country, and mo certainly the most diverse in the state, where hmm. um, different cultures may spell English words differently and so forth. And I do think there's got to be some credence given to that fact um, and setting precedent. Mayor. Um, council member speech. I'd just like to point out, um, when I first read that the, the temporary sign sketch I thought it was a misspelling but when I looked up at the top where they said where the the wording was actually spelled the same way mm -hmm. as the signing wording they spelled it the same so it may not be a mistake on their part it may be a choice of how they're choosing to brand their um, business some people uh -oh. misspell or or spell things a certain way so I you know I think it's good to recommend it but it mm -hmm. may be how they chose to brand their business just my opinion. Okay. okay. So, um, all those in favor of uh, approval? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, okay. Director Maloney, uh, 15D, please. This is another temporary sign request by C.W. Price located at 26100 Greenfield. They're requesting one four foot by 40 foot exterior banner to be displayed at the top of their building. From March 17th through May 16th, they are requesting the 30-day extension at this time. Um, it is for um, CW Price um, to display a store closing banner. Don't let that scare you. They are not closing. They are actually just changing names. So they're doing a liquidation sale, oh. um, becoming a new type of store. And the new store will be called Phallus. Good news. Okay. Motion to approve the sign, please. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion or questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, Director Maroney, 15E, please. Yes. This past winter, the city installed many new holiday lights that um, were along Oak Park Boulevard and at the Nine and Coolidge intersection. It is now that time of year that we need to have those items removed. Um, unfortunately, DPW is... I guess this is their busy time of year, so mm -hmm. it's not something that they want to take on on a permanent basis. So we have solicited several quotes from companies that remove and install holiday lighting. We've received two out of four that we requested back. Um, one initial quote was um, 
rather, rather high, I was able to receive a second quote, which is less than half of what the original quote was. So um, I'm asking that you approve moving funds from our professional services account to contractual services. Um, so there's no addition to a budget cost, just moving from one line item to another. So we can um, use Michigan Holiday Lighting for $4,800 to remove the holiday lights this month. Okay. Um, motion to approve this contract with holiday lighting. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion or questions? Mayor Pro Tem. Um, storage of all these items, is that, uh, uh, and they're going to be packaging them up, they're going to be taking them somewhere. Um, is that on our grounds or is that uh, they provide storage? Yeah. Our DPW has room for them, but this company is offered to store them as well, so it's up to us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, roll call, please. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Councilmember Seligson. Yes. Councilmember Speech. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine. Yes. Mayor, motion carries unanimously. Director Maroney, um, 15F, please. Yes. <clears throat> The City of Oak Park has been working to redevelop its commercial corridors and to promote economic growth, and it is recommended that the Oak Park um, City Council establish a corridor improvement authority under Public Act 280 of 2005. It authorizes the city to create one or more corridor improvement authorities. The act is a tax increment financing tool that will promote economic development and is designed to assist in economic um, economic development and redevelopment in our established commercial districts. It allows the community to combine tax dollars from a variety of sources to leverage economic development dollars within the corridor improvement district. The district that we're proposing is along Coolidge. Um, it would extend from 11 mile to 8 mile and also include portions of 9 mile road as well. Uh, initially, we have been talking with Huntington Woods that may also create a quarter improvement authority so that we can work jointly on the efforts uh, along Coolidge, but right now we are establishing our own here locally. Um, we've presented this to council before, so if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, there, there are some uh, spots on 11 mile, you said, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, City Manager Chungi. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I want to just say a couple of things, and um, Director Maroney, thank you for all the hard work that you've put into this corridor improvement authority. For, for the members of our, of our public, um, a corridor improvement authority is very similar to what you've probably heard, which is a downtown development authority. And as you know, we don't have a traditional downtown here in the city of Oak Park, so this is our, our version of what a lot of other cities with traditional downtowns do. But I can't under estimate or understate the significance of um, this possible action by the city council. This was the main thrust of a year-long strategic economic development plan. And as we're already seeing, um, we have many, many projects in the hopper as a result of the efforts we've already started. And then this, of course, will propel us into a whole new stratosphere, we hope. That's wonderful. This is um, a big deal. Mm -hmm. This is a real big deal for the history of Oak Park. Uh, it's going to allow street projects and improvements to the city streets and the shopping areas to make our Four Corners and other shopping districts more appealing, uh, busier, more vibrant. Uh, it's, it's an exciting day today. Um, we need a um, the City Council to adopt the resolution of intent to establish the Corridor Improvement Authority and set the public hearing date for May 4th, 2015 at 7 o'clock. A motion to do that. So, so moved. moved. Second. And seconded. Discussion or questions? Council Member Speech. I just want to express how excited I am about this one and um, in full expectation that we'll be able to do more because we do have uh, four corners and neighbors that are doing such great things and hopefully willing to partner with us. Yes, we're looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. This is exciting. Mayor Pro Tem. I just want to uh, express that this is the vehicle for being able to uh, revitalize and uh, uh, improve all of our business district, especially through our main thoroughfare, which runs right through the city of Coolidge. 
and uh, that uh, this is a great step forward. Very exciting. Any other comments? Roll call, please. Council Member Seligson. Yes. Council Member Speech. Yes. Council Member Burns. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes, and this passes unanimously, and this is a big step forward. Very exciting day with all the heroes and all the good news. Very exciting day. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Director Hall, could you join me at the podium? I don't often get to say that, but <laughs> welcome. Mayor and Council, I wanted to um, ask for you to approve the uh, resolution for the designation of July as Parks and Recreation Month in the City of Oak Park. Uh, we have such tremendous assets here, specifically Shepherd Park, and uh, the number of programs that we offer to citizens, and it's something that I think we should cele celebrate. Um, all over the country, Parks and Recreation are seen as an economic tool. And I think that's something that we should highlight here with the city. That is one of our busiest times uh, with our special events and then even going into August with Summerfest. So uh, we will be highlighting uh, July, starting off on July 1st with the bike rodeo uh, oh. where kids can come and decorate their bikes for the parade that will take place on July 3rd. Uh, we also have the 5K and the Fun Fest, concerts in the park, um, we will be starting a senior walking group this summer that will take place in the park. Our day camp pool and all our summer port sports are in full action during the month of July. So requesting we celebrate that. Okay, um, a motion to recognize July as National Parks and Recreation Month in Oak Park. So moved. Second. Any discussion or questions? When are the seniors going to start walking? Well, they're, and Carly's working on that, but it'll be Thursday mornings. They're just narrow di narrowing down a time. Fabulous. Um, there is a, a wonderful poster um, celebrating July as Parks and Rec Month, and it's true. We have a director of community and economic development because it takes both of those to make a wonderful city. There has to be fun things happening in the city. Um, art events, of course, and um, fun events. So this is hand in hand with the economic development and we're delighted that you've got all this fun stuff coming for us. Um, did we vote? We need to vote, Madam Mayor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimously passed. All right. Thank, Thank you. I'd like to, uh, Director Barrett, if you could join me for 15H and if you could walk us through this item, please. Welcome. Uh, good evening, Mayor, City Council, City Manager. Uh, I'm here to report on the bids for the cold odor tree removal project. Uh, at the bid opening on February 23rd, the only uh, contractor did not submit the uh, bid bond, which is one of the requirements for our bidding process. Um, it is recommended that the, that the request to reject the low bid and re-advertise the bids for the 2015 Troy Code Order Tree Removal Projects M620 be approved. Funding is available for Technical Planning Professional Service Accounts for this expenditure. Okay, so um, we need a motion to reject the low bid and re-advertise the bids. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion or questions? Question? Just a question. The, the one uh, uh, company that did bid on this, is this a company that we've used in the past? Or? We have not used this company in the past. So mm -hmm. none of the companies we've used in the past have bid on it? They did not. Huh. No. Okay. Um, might be noted also is that a, a, a second company did attempt to turn in a bid two hours late, which we did not accept. So we may get a second bid on the second go around. Right. Or several. Thanks. Uh, do, were we happy with the previous company? We have never put this out of, to a public bid uh, like this to do tree, uh, court order tree removals, but um, we do have an extensive amount of dead trees and we. Uh, with the amount of the contract that's going to go up, we had to put this out to bid. This is the first ah. time we've done this contract. Got it. 
Okay. Any other questions? Um, uh, City Clerk, can we do a, a, a roll call, please? Councilmember Speech. Yes. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Councilmember Selick. Yes. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Okay. And then I have 15 I through N. And these are resolutions authorizing the city assessor to prepare the special assessment role for the various charges. Right. So we need to adopt a resolution authorizing the city assessor to prepare a special assessment role assessing unpaid charges together with the 10% penalty um, for false alarm charges for $2,860, mm -hmm. weed mowing for $10,935.09, sidewalk repair $184,928.48, Water invoices for $148,746.49. Special pickup services in the amount of $5,025.43. Snow removal charges in the amount of $3,917.90. Uh, a motion to adopt, please. So moved. Uh, you got one more. Support. Uh, we got snow removal. No, we got them all. You got them got all. Them all. Got, them all. Got, them all. got them all. Last one's in on the second, on the last Met, page. Madam Mayor. Yes, please. Um, the, I just want to make a uh, correction here. The mm -hmm. water roll is a 15% penalty, not 10. It's misstated mm -hmm. on us. Um, a, okay. 15% penalty on the water. It, it, mm, I thought it, that was. Yeah, that's changed. Mm -hmm. It's 10%. It is 10%. Back to 10. Back to 10. Back to okay. 10. Okay. Um, so do we have a motion and a second? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, City Clerk, we have a motion and a second? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any discussion or questions? Roll call, please. Councilmember Burns. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Councilmember Seligson. Yes. Councilmember Speech. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Madam Mayor, members of council, last but not least, if the assistant city manager, he could join me for 15. Oh. Thank you. Please find attached a request from Macomb Pipelines and Utilities Company, the contractor for the 2014 water main replacement project. They have indicated they would like to extend their unit prices for, um, from this project to perform the 2015 water main replacement project M609. All the unit prices will remain the same, but they have requested that the mobilization, minor traffic control devices, and project cleanup be prorated from last year's project for the larger, larger size project. Funding is available in the Water and Sewer Fund, and it is recommended that City Council approve the offer from Macomb Pipeline and Utilities Company in the total amount of $461,034 for the 2015 Water Main Replacement Project M609 and as I mentioned, funding is available in the Water and Sewer Fund. Okay, motion to approve this offer for contact extension. So moved. Second. Okay, uh, questions or discussion? No. Council Member Burns. I just want to make sure that this, the total amount is, does not exceed the amount that we budgeted for, for this project. Um, the, the, Amount for this project that was budgeted for this project um, was $455,000. However, there was remaining funding in the Water and Sewer Fund in that account from other projects um, that will fund that project. So it won't be over budget for that um, in that account. Okay, and does the $461,000 amount account for the expansion of the project, the larger size? Yes, okay. this is a total project cost. Okay. For your questions. Roll call, please. Councilmember Burns? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Councilmember Seligson? Yes. Councilmember Speech? Yes. 
Madam Mayor, members of council, this completes the city manager report for this evening. Thank you. Uh, next, we have call to the audience. Uh, please give your name and address for the record. Uh, limit your comments to three minutes. Celebrating St. Patrick's Day today, are we? Yes, we are. <clears throat> and I came from home for this. Um, Joyce Bannon, 10611 Troy. I was watching at home, and maybe I missed it in earlier uh, city council meetings or earlier tonight because I was on the phone. But the property down at 8 Mile and uh, Greenfield, the military, the show stack is uh, proposing to build. Has that property been cleared of all the poisonous hazardous that's been in the soil down there? Mm -hmm. That was my concern. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, City Manager Tungate, would you speak to that, please? Well, Joyce, thank you for your question. The, the property has been, um, all of those things have been taken under uh, consideration obviously but the property has been remediated to the standard of this development and this is an industrial development um, they've done an extensive amount which all be public knowledge as this shakes out um, I don't have a lot of detail for you but the project has not even been proposed at this point but it will be remediated to a standard that is acceptable to the kind of development we're talking about that's why there hasn't been any development no right and I also wanted to say that you know we this the City Council allowed them years ago to put a brownfield plan in place where we could capture the tax increment financing to use to remediate it. So that's been an ongoing project as well. Mayor. Um, Council Member Seligson. Uh, during World War II, that property was the site of the Vickers uh, plant, the old Vickers plant. It was exceedingly dirty. Um, and uh, the first thing that we had done when Chostak Brothers took it over was get that, as the city manager said, it was remediated down to a standard uh, certain di various areas of the property are remediated to different standards. The one closest to Greenfield is remediated down to residential. That's the highest level. There are other levels, like this is going to have an industrial operation on it, so it doesn't have to come up to the standard of residential. But all this has been done. It took us years to get the Michigan uh, Environmental, I forget what the state organization is, uh, that, that handles that. Pardon? Environmental. Environmental is the state EPA basically to get us to uh, to that standard and it was all taken care of properly. Okay. Anyone else wish to speak? Then we will um, go to council comments. Um, I'm sure you've all noticed the snow is melting, the temperatures are soaring, over freezing even, and a few brave tulips are venturing out. I think it's safe to say spring is coming. Um, last Wednesday, I testified before the Road Commission for Oakland County, thanking them for the great job they did repairing Greenfield from eight to nine and for putting aside one half million dollars to improve Greenfield from nine to um, 11. That said, many residents are already experiencing problems with potholes on Greenfield severe enough to damage their cars. So I went to ask them, what about between now and you know, when they're going to fix it? So cold patch can be used for these potholes. <clears throat> it's a temporary solution. If the weather is wet, they tend to pop out quickly. If the weather goes from high temperatures during the day to low temperatures at night, they pop out quickly and have to be replaced. Could be the next day even. So then we ask them when can there be a more permanent solution and at the end of April, hot mix asphalt is available for a more permanent solution. And we are recommended to please call to report potholes. If they're on Oakland County roads, Greenfield and 10 Mile or 8 Mile, to contact the Oakland County Road Commission. Um, if they are in Royal Oak, we call DPW 248-691-7497. Um, these endless potholes show that we really need to do something about our roads. 
So I think we need to take a close look at Proposition 1 on the May 5th ballot. This Thursday, you're all invited back. It's the annual State of the City address in, in this City Hall building. There's a reception starting at 6. You, we'd love to have you come by. And the speech at 7. Please join our Oak Park City Council for an informative evening. Hope to see you on Thursday. Mayor Pro Tem Levine. Uh, good evening. I just um, kind of wanted to reiterate, reiterate what my point was about uh, the city serving alcoholic <laughs> beverages in city parks. Um, you know, economic development succeeds in dry, by drawing businesses, manufacturing, professional services, distribution centers, and retail residential development and restaurants into the area. I was elected to lead and not mislead. I think it's quite a stretch to say that uh, having people being able to drink beer when they come out with their families for a city event like the 4th of July is going to have an effect and impact on economic development is a stretch. Um, whether you stand one way or another, I just don't like the tenor of trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. Thank you. No one's pulling wool. This is attracting one of the economic development tools is to improve city events. City events uh, draw people from other cities. Having um, a wonderful charity like this, um, this one, what's the name that we had? Forgotten Harvest. It's, it's the best charity in the state of Michigan. Uh, it's a very common thing to do is to have a beer tent. They will spread the word throughout all of their email contacts to come on down to see Oak Park and to buy art at the art fair and to participate in our event and buy food at the uh, Oak Park, um, a taste of Oak Park. So I feel no one's pulling any wool. This is this will help with economic development. Next we have council member speech. Yes, um, as the mayor said, there is spring in the air. And one thing I've noticed is that as the, the um, snow is melting, uh, it's showing all of the debris that collected under the snow piles. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage everyone, whether it's in your yard or maybe in the street in front of you, if you see any of the um, trash that happened to be plowed up underneath all of that snow, please pick it up. Um, um, I'm doing that too, so um, it's, it certainly will make our community look better. Um, in the meantime, you know, the thaw is happening, so um, also be mindful of that because some of that trash is collecting around the drains and, you know, it's not getting to the drains like it should. The, the debris includes potato chip bags, but also leaves and things that didn't get raked um, before the snow came down. So just be mindful of that and let's keep Oak Park beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Council Member Burns. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming out. I just would like to say that spring has sprung, and even though the weather has changed, please dress accordingly. This is pneumonia weather. <laughs> and also, with the thawing weathers, we are getting our creatures are coming out from hibernation, our skunks, our rabbits. Please take precautions to take care of your pets. And also, please be mindful of the um, melting snow that may cause your basements to flood. Mm -hmm. Put everything up high. Thank you. Council Member Seligson. All good ideas. Have a good night, everybody. And Council Levine, Co uh, Mayor Pro Tem Levine, if you change your mind, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs> That's great.
Okay. 